when Dion gives you an opportunity to have a great video, your job is to take it. If you watched our earlier video, he stopped us and said, you know what? We need to talk about tragedies we are grateful for. So, Dion, it's your idea. I'll let you go first. What tragedy are you grateful for? So what what brings this up is the trajectory of your guys' lives was changed by the dot-com crash. Mm -hmm. It was. And a lot of people think, I, I hear this often of, if you can go back to when you were 18, what are the three words you would say? If you could go back and do this, if you put in the decade it takes to reach financial freedom and you make work optional, you wouldn't want to change anything about your past. Mm -hmm. Those things that we can go back and fix, those tragedies that sucked at the time, are why you are free now. And so there, there we all have tragedies we don't want to talk about. So I'll leave my marriages out of this. But <laughs> the, the Marine Corps downsizing, right? I, I'm I'm literally a crayon eating Marine. I've got my crayons ready to eat, meal ready sitting <laughs> over here. Uh, there's a Marine Corps flag outside my house. I've done everything but get the actual tattoo. My plan was at least 20 years, you know, Marine Corps. They downsize after Desert Storm and I get the enemy marksmanship award. My career gets changed. And uh, at the in the moment, imagine you have a 20 year goal ripped away by things outside of your control. Mm -hmm. Had I stayed, there's this core group of guys. And I say guys because I was in a male unit. Uh, about half of them tried to stay till 20. And almost all of those got pushed out at 15 to 17 years. Ooh, wow. Medical push out, downsizing, MOS not renewing, whatever it was. So they didn't get the pension they were staying for. They got a longer, more uh, thorough experience of the core. But that was changed. I'm glad that I had the tragedy of right after Desert yeah. Storm at downsizes. Sure. Other words, I probably would have been pushed out at 15 to 17 years. Would have not developed the skills that it took and, and not learned working in the civilian world the... I think this only comes from decades, the hatred of a job, right? I love the job that I had, but having to work and having an alarm clock and having a boss and having customers and compliance and all those kind of things. So I wouldn't want to retire sooner than I did because retiring when I did with the tragedies that took away one of my pensions is why I won't go back to work and, and why life is so amazing every day that I get to do anything, not nothing. Sometimes it's nothing, but it's anything every single day because of some of the bad things that's happened in life, like the dot-com crash hit you guys. Yeah. Matt, I'll let you go next. I mean, I think, you know, the, when the dot-com bomb happened and I watched my, you know, watch my hard-earned money at, uh, you know, 22 years old evaporate and go to basically zero you know, less than a thousand dollars, 32,000 or something like that down to, uh, you know, less than a grand. Uh, I was, I was shocked that something could go that bad that fast and the speed by which it happened. The fact that I was completely outside the know, the fact that there was some whisper number or whisper rumor, and then that, that knocked it from 25 a share to 15 a share, you know, after it gone up to 25 in the previous couple of days and then it's 15. And then literally that afternoon, I walk out of a sales call and it, the stock is halted. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've not been doing this very long, but I can't mm -hmm. imagine that that's a very good thing. That's Something probably not good. I was like, this does not sound good. And so I was on that horrible ride. It was halted for six weeks. It finally came off of being halted and it wasn't worth $15 anymore. It was now worth 91 cents. And so the findings were found. And that they had, you know, been loose with their words and they were sanctioned and blah, blah, blah. And all faith was lost in the company. Now it's 91 cents. Mm -hmm. And so I know that that can never happen with a house. And so what transitioned me to a different strategy was looking at the fact that I wanted something that was more stable, was something that I could touch, that I could feel, um, that wasn't just paper. Um, it was a thing and it was something that people would use and something that people would pay to use. And when it, when it was then looking at, okay, what's legal that fits all those criteria and what's legal that fits all those criteria is real estate. And so I was, so then I started to explore that more. And then I said, Hey, there's no better way to do this than kind of, I had bought my first property. I couldn't afford it on myself, on my own. So I got a roommate for a thousand dollar lease. And with that, I qualified for the property. I was like, Hey, this is a really good idea. I'm just going to do this again. Yeah, let me do that again. Some is good. Yeah. More is better. 
Exactly. And so that I didn't go into it going, I'm going to be a house hacker. I went into it like I need to meet the need of a mortgage and I don't make enough money to meet that need of the mortgage. So I got to get somebody that's on, on paper. That's my roommate that is going to help me pay for this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so I think that, you know, when it's all said and done, I think the thing that I'm grateful for is that massive stock market crash. If it were just a little bit painful, 27 to 20, uh, that wouldn't have worked. Right. Wouldn't have worked. 27 to 900 worked really well. Yeah. 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 I'll give you one. Um, I actually, I've, I've thought of two that are, are interesting. So we'll, we'll plan to go around at least one more time. Uh, I don't think I've mentioned this in a long time, but I was married at 19, brand mm. new 19. I'm talking like 19 in two months, something like that. Mm. And at 19, you had responsibilities as, as a husband. I was still going to school. I had college debt. Uh, I was working at Sears. Uh, and there was just not enough money. So I had I had some choices, right? I, I could quit school. I mean, I actually thought about quitting school and becoming a physical therapist because that was something I thought a 19-year-old kid, 20-year-old kid could do and, you know, make decent money. Um after after conversations, it, it's like, no, you're 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 you know, your job's to go to school because I believed that college education was the key to making more money. And I was making God, 28 grand, maybe 30 grand, maybe 25, something terrible like that. But what I had to do there is I had to find a second job because there just wasn't enough money. Hmm. So from 19, probably until 24, 25, I worked 363 days a year. I had Thanksgiving and Christmas off. Both my employers had those days off. So I I worked 363 days a year for, I don't know, call it five years. And still went to school full time. Hmm. Now, I wasn't a great student. There wasn't there wasn't a lot of studying going on, but I found a way to graduate. And with that. You know, I I wouldn't wish getting married at 19 on anyone. I mean, (laughs) talk about your not having a college experience. I was the idiot in class at 730. I was out by 1030. Uh, I was at my first job at noon, worked till nine, uh, would be at a second job on the weekend. And I I didn't have any choices. I didn't have any choices. So um, I learned, I really learned what you, what you're capable of if you just, you know, don't stop. So that, that's the first, I don't, calling my first, calling it a, the marriage of tragedy is not that, but it's just, you had, you had to, you had to take ownership. That That was a pivotal moment getting married that young and, and having to, uh, having to grow up. Yeah. I'm sure Dion agrees. I wouldn't wish marriage on somebody at 19, 29, 39, 49, 59 either. Exactly. All right, Dean, what's number two for you? So speaking of take the marriage out when I go through the divorce, one of them, I find out about $313,000 in bad debt in my name. I didn't know existed till the divorce. Negotiate that down to 89. So I learned how to negotiate down bad debt. That was good. Came from the tragedy. But that was the wake up call. How many people watching right now? And I'm not saying your spouse is doing something that you don't like. Yep. Where you let your spouse run your finances. And there, there are a lot of people. I know people. That's, that's 100%. He or she makes the money. The partner manages the money Mm. for a lot of people. It works out great for me. I think part of the wake up call was, yeah, I got laid off from law enforcement and I, and I realized, okay, my pensions keep getting taken away. So the Marines are gone. Law enforcement's gone. And I've got all this bad debt because I'm not taking charge. So not only did I take charge of my finances and go, okay, here's how I tackle the debt. Here's my plan for financial freedom. But I also said, I'm going to take charge and make my own pension. I don't think, this happens without the debt. So am I happy I woke up and found out about that? No. But am I grateful for the tragedy of having to dig out of $89,000 in bad debt? Because it said, you worked for financial freedom. Mostly, and my goal really wasn't even to retire early. It was so that I don't become a financial burden to my kids when I'm too old to work. That was the actual starting goal. Ends it up being financially free, I can scuba dive anywhere. I can I can house hack to a place where I literally yesterday 
I walk down to the water with a bucket and a rake. And I come back with three or four nights of crab. Mm. I've just got the, the meals for the week's plan. Can do that because one, I think yesterday it's Tuesday. Everybody else is at work. I could go do this. I don't know when the crab season and the permit things are here. So uh, it's on my own property though. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> they were great. And this is happening in this purchased for cash house with cash flow from rentals that take me two hours a month to manage because I didn't have control and I was realizing what it cost me. I took charge, built my own pension. Love that. Love that. Matt, what's number two for you? Uh, probably my daughter getting cancer. That Whoa. was, yeah. Yeah. It was one of the toughest things to go through in my entire life. Probably the toughest thing in my entire life. Oh, it was um, tough for me. And I was watching it from afar. That was, I remember that. I remember those phone calls. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So her getting cancer um, and being, uh, getting the opportunity to be a dad. And so it was, you know, kind of like Dion probably feel, feel, felt about being a single dad, you know, for all intents and purposes, I was a single dad working, trying to work a job that takes 60 hours a week to get done what I need to get done, managing my real estate or our real estate empire and taking care of a three-year-old and a two-year-old or somebody, uh, uh, my second daughter or my first daughter who just was turning two, um, that was up at five 30 in the morning and bed by one or one 30 in the morning when my wife was in the hospital with our daughter, with our second daughter. So it was uh, the toughest thing to go through. But what you realize when you're going through a tough time like that is you're either the victor or the victim and mm -hmm. you're, you have that choice. And that choice is growing up with, we're going to put the next foot in front of the other. We're going to do the next thing. And we're going to do the next thing. And we're going to keep on going. We're going to keep on doing the next thing. And whatever it is, we're just going to do the next thing. And we're focused on doing the next thing. But that opportunity that I got to spend time with my kids um, really enlightened me to uh, that I was really ready, that I really wanted to not be being the rock star is addictive. Mike, you know this. And Dion, you know, this as the CEO of your company. Being the rock star does get addictive. If there was a problem, it was me. I fixed it. I made it right. And I made it better. And and whatever it was in the company that I was in, you guys were the same exact thing. That's why I think we're such close friends is because we know exactly what that's like to have all the burden and sometimes only some of the power to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the biggest thing for me. That was the hardest thing for me um, was going through that experience, but recognizing that on the other side of it, we were blessed and we got a miracle and our daughter's great. She just had her two year scans yesterday. She's still all hundred percent clear. Um, so we thank you for all the, uh, prayers and, and well wishes, but that was the hardest thing in my life. Um, aside from being there when my mom died, uh, and taking care of my mom the last three months she was alive. Um, and, and that's why, uh, that's why I act pretty flip when people say things to me, I don't care. And I'm more than happy to poke them in the eye. Cause I just don't, it's like, whatever, go away. Um, but like to let them know that I don't care and they can go away. And they can be dismissed. And so mm -hmm. that change with my daughter is, and and Dion's constant harassment, um, and yours as well, Mike, um, mm -hmm. was what really helped me realize that I was, uh, it, it was, like I said, for a long time, for the year, year and a half I was going through it, it was like, it had to be right here and it had to be right here. Mm -hmm. And that's, that experience is what helped it get right here. I was here already. I didn't want to do the job anymore. I didn't like the job. I didn't like the people that I was working for anymore. So I was here, but not here. And so my daughter changed that. My daughter helped change that because with her clear scans yesterday, I spend dedicated time with all of my kids every single week. In fact, mm -hmm. largely every day. And that is something I wouldn't trade. Somebody asked me yesterday that knows other people that I worked with. They said, so do you miss it? And I go, not even the slightest bit. Mm -hmm. She goes, what would you tell them? I would say, I said, what would I tell them? I said, I would tell them suckers. I told you what I was doing was going to be to get out of here faster. Mm -hmm. I said, I didn't want to do it. So I'm just, we're just immensely blessed. And it was great to get that report for Eliana, but that changed, that completely changed and transformed my life forever. For sure. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's. Sorry, right. that's hard to follow. I apologize, Mike. You probably should have me go last. No, I, 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 <laughs> hey man, it's all good. Yeah, my, my my last tragedy that I'm thankful for is actually losing my job at 45 that I loved 
would have literally done for free because being the man's addictive, you're absolutely right. Yeah, so is, and, yeah. and I had always, I had been telling myself for the better part of at least two and a half decades, I'm going to, I'm going to declare victory at 50. 50 was the magic number. And I was locked into that. I was totally cool with that. Uh, you know, I was, I enjoyed everything. And then that day came and suddenly I didn't have that job anymore. Hmm. And my entire identity was blown up, but I didn't know it yet. Right. Right. Who I was on February or on January 31st, because the company I was at, that was their end of the year. And who I was February 3rd were different people. And I, you know, in hindsight, the person that I was died. Yeah. And I didn't sure. know it. I didn't know it. And mm -hmm. I had to go through a, a grieving process by yeah. myself because at the time, I didn't know anybody else who'd earn financial freedom. Right. I didn't know what that was supposed to feel like. Sure. I didn't know what, you know, getting up at 6 a.m. and not going to work was felt like. So, um, in hindsight, you know, Mike Zuber died, you know, February 2nd or 3rd, wherever that Monday was. And he didn't know it. And he went through some hard times for a couple of months. And again, when I go back and think about this, I, I, I'm at the kitchen table. It's Saturday. And I'm like, dude, if I don't, if I don't get out of this freaking headspace, I'm going to get a job. And, you know, that moment, that spark birthed one rental at a time. Mm -hmm. And I became somebody else. I, it was, it started as an infant and I didn't know what it was. And I, like you just kept putting one foot in front of the other. I still have no idea what I'm doing. Six years <laughs> later, I, I still don't edit videos. I, I mean, I still don't know what I'm doing, but I do know that the three of us and in, in the millionaire crew are helping people every day. Absolutely. And, um, I wouldn't be here if I didn't lose that job you know, February 2nd or 3rd of 2018. So, um, you know, in, in that, that I, I died and I did in like, I had always planned to get out and like, I kind of envisioned what it would feel like, but then just has just to have that ripped five years forward. That was, that was not fun. That was not fun. So, yeah. All right. That's enough about tragedies. We're grateful for it. We'll go the other way. Matt, where can people find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram and in the wonderful school community, hanging out, answering questions. And so, and the Facebook, the people still post, post to Facebook all the time too. Oh so yeah, it's Facebook, like, Facebook groups, 2000 people. I just yeah. don't like it because I have no reach. Yeah, but. no, I mean, it's awesome, Zub. Like, thank you for giving me another job to do. I love yeah. it. Wonderful. Really appreciate that. I mean, uh, let's just fill up more of my free time. Yeah, well, you do have a lot of it. Nowadays. Yeah, I do. I have a lot. Well, thanks to you. I see the diabolical <laughs> plan, by the way. Retire, then launch another group. And yeah. now I'm now I get it. Well done. Well done. I got well it. Well played, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Leon, where can they find you? I almost don't want to say this because I, I risk you not putting this video out. So if you're watching this video, it means Mike has huge ones. You can find me right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, where I often talk my friends into making videos they hope their spouses don't see. Mike, you actually said my marriage is a tragedy. And Matt, you actually <laughs> said, for all intents and purposes, I'm a single parent. Yeah, true, I, I did. Both. Yes. I hope this makes it online. <laughs> oh, no, it absolutely will. Absolutely will. Olivia does not watch any of my videos, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I know that with certainty. Yes. All right, guys, take care of yourself. See you guys. Bye.